we will start to make our way to our backs. I know. See, that's why that cat bothers you, Cynthia. You pet them all the time. <laughs> that cat's adorable. It is so loving. <laughs> all right, we're ready. Mine is only loving when he feels like it. But as we come on to our backs, just taking that moment to check in with the breath. Notice any places in the body that may or may not be holding tension. Just got to. And just kind of doing that little full yeah, body good. scan as the breath lengthens and slows. And then comes in and out through just the nose. And in that next breath, we're going to go ahead and draw the right knee up and in, pulling it towards the outside of the rib cage, more towards the shoulder, and going ahead and flexing both of those feet so it can bring you a little bit of warmth, a little bit of grounding into the body. And in that next breath, we're just going to switch those sides. So the right leg comes long, left leg goes in. Maybe you roll the ankles a few times before you settle into flexing the feet to really get that length. And in that next breath, We'll just go ahead and extend the left foot towards the ceiling. Maybe you've got a bend in the knee. Maybe the leg is ready to be straight. Again, taking a couple moments to roll out the ankle. I'm starting to bring some passive length into the back of the leg. With that next breath, you're just going to bend the knee and then let the leg drop open towards the left. The knee might be covering in space. So you might be open enough. The leg makes it all the way down to the ground. Then you're going to bring that leg up, plant the right foot on the floor, and just go ahead and figure four, the left ankle at the right knee, drawing the knees up and in. And with that next breath, we're going to release the hands to the back of the head and move through eight pigeon crunches as you inhale. Elbows come up, trying to tap those knees. Exhale, to release. Two, three, four, and last one, five. After that fifth one, we're going to let that right foot ground, left leg's going to come long, and then we'll go ahead and extend the left right foot towards the ceiling. So again, taking whatever you need to, to start waking up the hamstrings, rolling the ankles, keeping a bend in the knee. And then we're gonna bend that knee to about a 90 degree angle, then let the leg drop open towards the right. Again, noticing whether or not that hip feels nice and open across the front. Maybe the knee is hovering. Maybe it comes all the way to the ground. And with that next breath, we're going to start to make our way towards your reclined pigeon. So the right knee comes up, left foot plants, and then you're just going to let the ankle and the knee find each other. Then hands are coming to the back of the head. You've got your five pigeon crunches. So as you inhale, elbows to knee, releasing. Two, three, four, and five. 
back to that fifth one. You're just going to let the head, neck, and shoulders come back to the mat, releasing the hands, going ahead and uncrossing and drawing both knees into the chest, taking that quick second to rock side to side. Ironing out any kinks in the back. And when you're ready, we'll rock and roll into your tabletop. And then from tabletop, starting to move through your cat and your cow, incorporating any other movement that you need to here. And when you're ready, we're going to let the right foot come out long from the back, trying to keep it parallel to your mat. And as you exhale, you're going to take the knee and tap the inside of the right elbow, take the knee back, tap the outside of the right elbow, back, and we're going to do that coming across the left. So inside of the left elbow, back, see if you can't take it all the way to the outside, back, finding that length. When you feel stable here, the left arm reaches. In that next breath, you're gonna see if you can't reach around and grab that foot behind you, coming into a bow variation. As you exhale, we're just going to release on down to the mat. Find whatever movement that you need to here. To release your two sides. And in that next breath, we'll take the left leg out. Just finding that moment of stability first. And then we're going to do our little elbow tap. So the right knee comes to the out, the left knee, outside left elbow. Take it back, inside, back. We're going to take it to the inside of the right elbow, back. And then you're going to twist just a little bit so you can't find the back of the left, right. Come long. And then make your way into that bow. Although I think we did an asymmetrical bow last time, so just getting the right arm lifts and then reaching around. Yep. Whew. Let's see. And then after our five breaths, we'll return back to that tabletop, passing through whatever breath that you need to here. Check to make sure that wasn't my little cousin. There's Jen. Then when you're ready, we're gonna tuck the toes and hover the knees three inches off of the mat. And then from there, pressing up and back into your down dog. Maybe you pedal the feet out here. Maybe stillness feels good for you. And in that next breath, you're just gonna walk the hands back towards the feet. Inhaling into your flat back, exhaling into your forward fold of choice. In that next breath, you're just going to walk your hands back out, finding your plank. Then in your fifth breath, we're going to lower through our first chaturanga. Inhale into your dog or cobra. 
Exhale, we'll take it back to down dog. And maybe the down dog feels a little bit better the second time around. Maybe you still need some pedaling. And then that next breath, we're gonna take the feet towards the hands, walking or hopping, inhaling into your flat back, exhaling into your fold. As you inhale, the arms come on up, exhaling hands come in. We're gonna move through two more traditional A's, so arms rise, folding with your exhale. Inhale, flat back. Exhale to start moving through your vinyasa, so finding your plank, your chaturanga, moving into your up dog or cobra, and then taking it back to your down dog. With that next exhale, you're going to make the trek to your hands. Find your flat back. Move into your fold. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands are coming in. We've got our second traditional A, so the arms are coming up. Folding to your mat. Finding your flat back. And then moving through your vinyasa. I'm just taking those five breaths however you need and stillness. Walking the heels out. With that next breath, you're making your way towards the hands. Into your flat back. Back into your fold. Arms are coming up. Exhale, hands come in, and we're going to start to make our way through some flows. So arms are rising up, exhaling back down towards your mat, finding your flat back, and then again through your vinyasa. So when you find your down dog, we're going to lift the right leg. Maybe you circle out that hip, just finding whatever movement feels good here. Then your fifth breath, you're going to bring the knee to the inside of the right elbow. We're going to shoot it back up. Outside of the right elbow, shoot it back up. Left, inside, up, left, outside, up, and then you're going to step it through, letting that back heel spin in, finding a warrior two. As you exhale, dropping back into a reverse. Mm -hmm. With that next breath, you're going to come into your side angle. So the right arm might be settling on top of the right leg. It might be dropping to the inside or outside of that leg. Then your fifth breath, we're going to take this lifted left hand to the mat. You end up spinning up onto those back left toes as the right arm reaches. In your fifth breath, the right hand comes to the mat. 
Here's gonna shoot that right leg out behind you so that it's hovering. Nice. And then you're gonna tap the back of the left elbow, lean right, take it left, take it back, hover as you move through your vinyasa. Then you get back to your down dog. Nice. So when you find your down dog, just pedaling those heels out for a second. And then we'll take the left leg up. Again, just taking that moment to circle out the hip. Find whatever you need to here. And in that next breath, the left knee comes to the outside of the left elbow. Nice, you're taking it up, inside of left, up, inside of right, up. Last one as we go to the outside of right. Nice, coming up and then stepping through to your warrior two. As you exhale, you're going to find your reverse warrior. And then your side angle. So the left forearm settling on top of, inside of, or outside of the left leg. Right arm reaches to that little spot in between the wall and the ceiling. And that next breath, we're coming into that twist. So the right hand's coming to the mat. You're coming up on the right toes. The left arm lifts. In that next breath, we're going to ground both hands. Shoot that left foot out so you're in a kind of like a hover plank. We're just going to tap the left elbow, shoot it back, tap the right, shoot it back, keep that leg hovering while you lower through your chaturanga into your up dog or cobra. And following that back bend, using both feet to make your way into your down dog. And with that next breath, you're going to take it to the hands, finding your flat back, moving through your vent up to a fold, inhaling the arms are coming up overhead, exhaling the hands come into heart center. From here, we're going to go ahead and take the hands to the hips, feet are going to step about hip distance apart, inhaling for your length. Exhaling into a big forward fold of your choice. Maybe you notice that this one's a little bit deeper than that first one that we took. And as you inhale, arm turn, come up overhead. Exhale, hands are coming to heart center. From here, you're gonna sit back into your chair. We'll heel to those feet back in together. Then you're going to take the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. In that next breath, we're going to see if we can't take this left foot, step it back into crescent feet, keeping our twist. In your fifth breath, coming up into a crescent warrior. So you see that twist, arms come overhead. Back 
and then opening out into your warrior two. Dropping on back into your reverse. Moving into your side angle. So maybe you stay on the leg, maybe you drop. And we're coming into that twist. So we're just going to switch the hands. Left hand's ready to come to the mat. We're coming out the back left toes. It's the right arm lifts. From here, we're going to take both hands towards the mat. For a second, we're going to drop that back left knee. You're going to pull forward through that front right knee, really releasing the front of the hip flexor. Then you're going to kick back to your half on and walk. In your fifth breath, we're rocking back forward. You're going to tuck those back toes. Start to really press through them so that left knee is coming off the mat. Engaging your core as you move back up into a crescent. Nice. We're going to finish the side with a little bit of balance. So hands are going to go ahead and come towards the waist. We're going to bring that back left knee up. And then from here, we're going to start to wrap it around the right knee. The right knee is going to bend until you find your eagle legs. Nice. And then we're going to take arms up or whatever we need to do is get that right arm underneath the left. So finding your full eagle here. <laughs> Eagle caps. <laughs> and then as you exhale to release all that, arms are coming up overhead. Exhaling into your fold. Inhaling through your flat back. And then exhaling, we're going to move through our vinyasa. So finding your plank, chaturanga, dog cobra. <laughs> Pass the town dogs. A few seconds here. Oh man, she summoned everybody. <laughs> and then from here, eyes find the hands. Feet are making their way back towards the top of your mat. Inhaling into your flat back. As you exhale, we're going to fold. Inhaling, arms are coming up overhead. Exhaling, hands are coming into heart center. You're going to sit back in your chair. And we're moving into that twist. So the right elbow is moving to the outside, the left knee. Pressing through that elbow to really twist the heart open. With that next breath, we're going to see if we can't keep our arms, but step the right foot back into your crescent feet. Nice. And then we're going to make our way into crescent. Opening into your warrior two. And 
then finding your variation of side angle. Really trying to spin that chest open and knit the ribs in. So thinking about that triangle idea, fitting in between two panes of glass. And then from here, you're moving into that twist. So the right hand's coming down, coming onto the right toes. Left arm lifts. The closer you can get your torso to the leg, the deeper of a twist you're gonna get. And our fifth left, coming to both hands to the mat. Back knee drops, toes come long. First, we're gonna start by pulling forward through that left hip to really release the front of the right for the left knee, release the front of the right hip. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to our half split. <laughs> Coming back forward, you're going to plug in those back toes, start to press through that foot so the knee lifts. She's so polite about it though. Like my cat, <laughs> he's so loud right now. I would have already had to throw him outside because we make our way up to a crescent. <laughs> and from crescent, we're transitioning to that high knee. So arms are however you want. As we get this right leg, the top of the mat. <laughs> oh, she held it. She didn't know. We're moving to eagle. So you're going to continue to wrap that leg around, sit down, and then somehow or another, we're getting the left arm wrapped underneath the right. In our fifth breath, we're going to release all that as arms come up overhead. Exhaling into a fold. Inhaling into your flat back and moving through your vinyasa. And when you're ready, we're going to make our way back up to the hands. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling into your fold. As you inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands come into heart center. We're going to move through that one last time, just at one breath each. So we're going to throw in a little bit more balance at the end. And then we'll start to make our way into different flows. So arms are coming up. Exhale as you fold. Inhaling into your flat back, finding your way through a vinyasa. When you get to your down dog, the right leg lifts. We're going to tap the outside of the right elbow. Come back up. Inside. Come back up. Moving on over towards the left. Come back up. Outside left. Come back up. From here, you're going to step through into your crescent warrior. Opening into your warrior two. Dropping into your reverse. Side angle. Finding that twist with the left hand coming down, coming onto the left toes, right arm lifts. Nice. 
So from here, we're going to go ahead and really engage the core as we lift up into a revolved variation of crescent moon or crescent warrior. Warrior two, twisting over the right leg. Swing the back arm forward to find your crescent. And then we're going to step up into that high knee. And we'll start to slow down here so that we can catch our balance. We're going to kick it out to build just a little bit of strength. And then come into your eagle. So the left leg is starting to wrap. Maybe the right arms come overhead as you swing. Maybe you make your way there slightly differently. So from here, we're going to start to unwind the arms. The right, the left arm starts to reach back for that left leg as you find your dancer. In your fifth breath, we're going to bring that back left leg forward. We're going to figure four at the right knee. And you're just going to find a little pigeon squat. Five breaths. When you exhale, you let both hands come to the mat. You might have to bend that knee. And you're going to straighten the right leg as much as you can. Just getting a really deep pull. Damn, girl. <laughs> and then from there, you're going to bend that knee, pop that foot back out. The both feet are grounded, finding your flat back, folding. Whew. And then we're going to finish on the left side and start to move out of all the balancey stuff. So finding our vinyasa. And we're back in down dog. We'll hit the left, the left leg lifts. We've got our little elbow taps. So just making your way all the way across, outside left, up, inside left, up, inside right, up, and then outside right, up. After that, we're going to find our crescent warriors. And then twist over the left. From there, we're coming all the way back forward into a warrior two. Dropping back into your reverse. Finding your side angle. We're going to find that twist. So the right hand, right toes, left arm lifts. And from here, we're challenging that core. So we're going to see if we can't just lift up. And then get back to your warrior, your crescent. Hands are coming to the waist or transitioning into your high knee. We're slowing down here so we can find our balance. Five breaths as we kick out. and trying to find our eagle. So whatever the easiest method for you to get there, right crosses over left. Left, right crosses under left when it comes to arms. And then from our eagle, we're trying to find our dancer. So uncrossing. 
So you to reach for that back right leg. You can find your balance, maybe you can kick and fold. Nice. From here, we're gonna release. Find our standing pigeon legs. Figure fouring, maybe you're just figure forward. Maybe you can find that squat. And from here, maybe you keep a bend in the knee and just bend it over a little farther. You have the hands to the mat. Maybe you can start to straighten and blend. In our fifth breath, we're just going to bend that knee so that it's easier to release the right foot. Find your flat back. Move into a forward fold. Maybe you pedal the heels out here just to really release the back. And then moving through a vinyasa, so the feet start to find the back end of the mat. Chaturanga, up dog cobra. As you exhale, taking it back to your child's pose. And then from here, we're going to make our way back up onto the hands and to your tabletop. You are going to start to spread the knees about a distance apart. Make your way all the way up with the hands coming to the low back, fingertips pointed towards your mat. Inhaling for some length. Exhaling as you start to press the hips forward, just rolling the head back, not moving into a full camel yet. And then we're going to come back up. Exhaling, slowly rolling back a second time. Maybe you go a little deeper this time. Inhaling to use the core, rolling back up vertebrae by vertebrae. And on this third little dip, we're going to make our way to whatever our full camel is. So maybe you're rolling back and you stop. Maybe you can take the hands to the heels, rolling the shoulders open. In our fifth breath, we're going to come up and over. The knees are going to walk in. Arms are coming behind the body. So you're kind of in a child's pose with reverse arm. From here, you're going to reach behind you and see if you can't grab your heel. If you can't grab your heels, you're just going to reach around behind the back, clasping the hands. And then you're going to tuck the head, put your own crown of the head. As you inhale, you're going to start to lift the hips, moving into a rabbit. Okay. Inhaling, we're coming back up. We're just going to rock on over towards the hip, letting the legs swing around so they're extended out front. Inhaling for some length. Exhaling as you fold. Inhaling to make your way back up. We're going to take this right leg, step it across the left. You might keep this left leg out long, or you might bend at the knee, letting it wrap around the body. The left arm grounds next to that grounded hip. As you inhale, the right arm comes up. At, oh no, just kidding. The right hand is the one that's gonna ground. Then the left arm comes up and hooks the outside of that right knee. Inhaling to get some length. Exhaling as you twist to look farther out over that shoulder.
From here, we're gonna come back towards center. Grab that little counter pose if you need it. We're gonna untwist the feet, letting them come in together into your Baddha Konasana. Inhaling for some length. Exhaling into your fold. And as you inhale, you're coming back up. The right leg comes long. Left foot steps across it. You might keep the right leg long. You might let it come to the outside of the left hip. The right, no. the left hand grounds next to the left hip. Right arm comes up as you're going to get to the outside of that left knee. Moving into your twist. <laughs> and then from here, we're going to release our twist. Grab that little counter twist if you need. <laughs> it, he, he hits her with his paw. She doesn't pet him. This again, your body kanasana. <laughs> Grab the toes, rocking back onto your hips, starting to, or walking or rocking back onto your sitting bones, starting to pull the heart forward, and maybe you stay here. Maybe you come into some sort of like happy baby legs. Maybe you extend. <laughs> you bring the legs together. And when you brought the legs together and you have your balance, you're gonna go ahead and release the hands. And we're gonna to try to use the core as we lower the feet. Inhale, arms are coming up. Exhaling, moving towards those toes to release the back. And then inhaling arms are coming we're right here way back up. So from here, we're just gonna get a little bit into the inner thighs and then we're gonna start to make our way into back bending and whatnot. So that left leg swings all the way out. Right foot's coming to find that inner stop thigh. Inhaling as the arms come up, exhaling, twisting towards your toes and then folding into a lateral variation of Janu. Inhaling back up. We're going to let the right leg come out wide. Finding your length. Yogi's choice. If you bind on the feet or just reach out in front. Inhaling, we're gonna make our way back up. We're gonna take the left leg, cross the mat to find the right. Inhaling, arms come up. We're twisting all the way towards those toes and then folding. From here, inhaling, we're making our way back up. We're going to start to make our way on to the back. <laughs> We're going to start moving through back bending and inverting. Um, we're only going to do two back bends because we already did that big camel. <laughs> we're, I'm going to cue two bridges. I guess, Cynthia, you're at the mercy of your cat. <laughs> Depends on what the cat wants you to do right now. <laughs> She'll do a supported bridge with the cat under her. Yes. Tell her to make herself useful. <laughs> That's right. But 
Heels are coming to the mat, in close to the sitting bones aligned with them. Palms are down by the side, press into the mat, pressing through the feet to lift the hips. From here, rolling the shoulders underneath the body and clasping the hands beneath you. I know that we've all probably not been walking as much since we don't have many places to walk to right now. So come up onto the toes and draw the knees in just a little bit so that they're stacked on top of the ankles. You'll feel the glutes start to engage while you find that loop through your back. And then as you exhale, starting to release, finding your counter pose of choice. So again, maybe a switch of like knees, maybe you like knees into the chest, whatever your preference is. And in that next breath, we're gonna find our second and final back bend. So the heels come in close to the sitting bones, align with them. Palms are once again down by the side, pressed into the mat. Inhale at the bottom, exhale as you lift the hips. Starting to find your arm preferences for bridge and your feet preferences. If you want to really get into that glute while building the core, you're going to come up onto the toes. And for our first four breaths, we'll lift the right leg. For the second four, left leg. After you've got your eight breaths in, the hips start to lower, finding again whatever your counter pose is. So it could be windshield wiper knees. It could be happy baby. Just again, anything that gets the mat flat, uh, the back flat against your mat. And then we're going to start moving into our inversions. So maybe you take legs up. Maybe you take a shoulder stand. Maybe you take a full inversion. Whatever is calling your name today, we're just going for 10 breaths. After you've got in your 10 breath, start to make our way back towards the mat. Sorry about that. <laughs> Both feet plant on the mat. Arms are going to come out to a T, and you're going to find whatever supine twist you like. So maybe it's just both knees stacked on top of each other, dropping to the right. Maybe you like to cross one leg over the other. Coming back towards center, we're going to head on over towards the left. Coming back towards center, you're going to draw the knees into your chest, taking a quick moment to rock side to side. And then when you're ready, the right knee is going to draw in towards that right shoulder. 
pulling away from the rib cage towards the shoulder. Maybe you notice that your when you're moving pose feels a little bit more open since the beginning of our practice. And then you're just gonna switch your sides. So the right leg comes out, left knee pulls towards shoulder, away from the rib cage. And then you're letting that left leg go out long. Right leg's coming up. Maybe you're braced behind the knee. Maybe you're at the toe. If you are looking to build strength for like that leg lift that we did in our balance, you're going to pull the leg directly forward. If you are looking to gain more flexibility, as in wanting to move towards splits, you're going to angle the toes towards the shoulder and then pull the leg that way, sort of like we do in a wind removing pose. It just removes the rib cage from your, uh, the amount of length that you can get. And as you exhale, you're going to flex the left toes, hands come onto the left hip, and then letting that leg drop open. And again, maybe you notice that there feels like there's more leap in the leg than when we were here about an hour ago. You're going to take that left, right leg up if you have the toes, switching your grip as you take it across the body towards the left. This posture can feel different with the leg extended or with the knee bent. So just kind of noticing which opening feels better in your body today. And then from here, we're gonna come back towards center, hug that knee in, let it come down, and you're gonna get into the left. So the left leg lifts. Again, you might point the toes straight ahead and just pull. Or you might angle the toes towards the left shoulder to give a little bit more depth. And then dropping open towards the left. Inhale, we're going to come up if you have the toes, switching your grip. Ooh, that side's tighter because you take the toes to the right. And from there, you're coming back up. You're going to hug the left knee in. Right knee comes up to meet it. So maybe you take the next couple moments to rock side to side, ironing out any kinks in the low back. Maybe there's some additional movement that you need before you find your Shavasana. Um, um, cool. And then, so in those next couple breaths, we'll start making our way to that Shavasana. Hopefully finding maybe 10 seconds in which an animal is not bossing you around.
And then those next couple breaths, starting to bring the small movements back into the body. Starting in fingers and toes. Making your way to wrist and ankles. And then whenever you're ready, starting to make your way back to seated. And then as you inhale, arms are going to come up. Exhale, hands come in. I'm so glad everybody has all their power back. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, obviously that everything with the studio and almost, and at least even our teacher, Catherine, that she's safe. Let's just keep putting our good vibes out there and keep on practicing. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs>